my dad was a very strict disciplinary, very strict. But I didn't rebel and do bad things in high school because he loved us. He held us. He went to our basketball game. You know what I mean? He loved us. So you show me somebody that's hard, a little bit of disciplinary on our dog, if they have a good relationship, the dog will still be okay, even if they're a little too hard to handle. Um, the next thing is uh, I have four le- – well, let me t- talk about the sugar diet. So where I was going with the Marine Corps – we started the sugar diet since I can remember, like four or five years old. So the, all the month of January, we went without any sugar process. You could have natural sugar like lactose or fruit, but no processed sugar. I don't know, we just did that just growing up. So the whole month of January, he just disciplined us, no sugar. And then, and I still do that in October. Uh, I do it with, uh, I did it with my students because I taught U.S. history, and I don't know if you remember the Sugar Islands and all that, like the triangular trade. Anyway, I said America was based on the taste buds. The Columbus on the third discovery of America was only looking for the spice trade. He was looking for India. And I said, you guys would have a hard time going without sugar. These are eighth graders. They're like, we can go without sugar. I said, no, I did this growing up. Is when I first started teaching. They're like, we can go without sugar. I said, no, I'm talking like no processed sugar, no donuts, no cupcakes, nothing. They're like, okay, no, uh, we can't. I said, all right, I challenge you to go one month. And they said, well, what do we do if we get it? I said, nothing. There's no extra credit. This is your goal. Can you do it? I could have done a study on this. I had 150 students, five preps, 30 in a class. And out of my 150 students, 12 could make it. And they were, guess what they always were? My straight A students. I found that very interesting. They were able to set a goal without any accolades. One little boy was cute and he said, well, we don't get any points. I said, no points. It's your goal. And he goes, well, what if we cheat? I'm like, it's your goal. If you're in the closet, I told him, if you're in the closet eating sugar, you can cheat all you want. Raise your hand. I did it. You cheated it's your goal i always tell people what's your goal in shotsu what is your goal because my friends all think i'm ludicrous so if you win nationals what are you getting i'm like a trophy they're like you don't get like millions I'm like no i get a trophy and they're like it's my goal so when i'm out laying a track by myself no one's on the like that was a nice corner you laid great corner Joel. you're by yourself for your goal so i always ask people you you guys determine your own goal what, I don't know, whatever it is. I just want to do a BH. I want to make a one. I want to compete at a high level. There are things that are not going to happen unless you have a program that are steps. I'm telling you now. So there's, a, there's 50 million different programs out there. If you go to Marcus's, I don't know his program. I know it's genius because I've seen his work, the finished product, but I don't know how he does things. But what's really best is to find a program and stick with it. So let's say you go to Ivan and he wants a motivational out which means he waits, the helper locks up, he says, ouse, and he waits for the dog to get tired and offer the behavior of out. When the dog finally outs, he gives it a bite as a reward. That's a motivational out. You can picture that. You go to De La Segas, he's going to teach a compulsion out. Ouse, and he pulled the dog into him. The dog lets go, and he gives him a bite. Both programs are 100% perfect. A compulsion out is 100% perfect. A motivational is out. You cannot mix these two. You can't go Monday for a motivational out, Friday for a compulsion out. Either way is perfect. But you can't mix programs if they conflict with each other. You guys see what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. You you have to find. So trainer A, like I'm saying, let your dog push to work if you're with me. Trainer B might say, no, they look away, you hit them on the E. These two programs will collide. It will not work. So I'm talking about now the negative. So... Remember I talked about Garrow when I gave him a plots command when his daughter Demi, uh, the 11-month-old, uh, I said, nope. So now I'm talking about, now I'm going to correct. Because there comes a time where the rubber meets the road, you are going to fools. You are not allowed to look away and sniff. I have four levels of corrections. I right, level one, no, and I use a leash correction. That's what I talked about with the young dog when they're sniffing the pole, like, Slayer, pop. My level two correction, so now he's getting really good at coming every time. My level two correction is no, with a leash, combined with an e-call correction. So I do the abstract and the concrete. Slayer, no, tick. I use this simultaneously as this. That way the abstract starts to represent this. Does it make sense? Like, mm-hmm. no, tick. Level three, no, and then an e-collar correction. There is no leash anymore. For this exercise, just for name. 
And I do this with each exercise, whether it's foos, plots, whatever. I go through all these steps with each thing that I'm teaching. The next and the highest one is a silent correction. So let's just say I'm on a foos. And my dog has this perfect foos and he looks away. And I'm on step number four. I no longer say no. I just go, tick, 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 good boy. I praise after the correction. That's called a silent correction. I want to always get to this exercise. Because in a trial, I don't have the luxury of saying what? No. Yeah. And I stop repeating myself. These are the four levels. Now, here's how I teach the e-collar. This is a very controversial tool. And let me tell you why. A lot of people are misunderstand it. I teach e-collar classes all the time. And guess where I put the e-collar? On the handler. I don't put it on the dog. And I have I use a dog tra. I'm about to go to uh, e-technologies. Because dog tra's product isn't quite as good these days. I put it on their hand. And I start at zero. It goes from zero to 127. And I just start playing this game. And I tell them, let me know when you feel it. 13, 14. Hey, I think I felt it. Let's say it's on 15. Does he want me to go up by one? Yeah, 16. I felt it. Now, a dog doesn't have the luxury of saying, I felt it. So I look for things in dogs. I put it on. They're just sniffing around, and I play the same game. Tick, and then all of a sudden, you see them do this. I'm like, okay, you felt it. The e-collar is not supposed to be a, a device like, now I got you. Arr, arr, arr. It's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be, I can communicate with you from distance. It cleans it up. The problem is when people misuse it, that's when it gets a really bad name. Um, just like this. You can say somebody, uh, say, I don't like... The They're trying to regulate the human heart in America, and this is what's the hard thing. <clears throat> I can say I never corrected my dog, but with a puppy with a spoon and a pan, and just scare it when it does something wrong. I might be doing more damage to that dog psychologically than a good old leash correction. Does that make sense? How about Jim Morrison from The Doors? You guys remember that, Jim Morrison? His dad did not believe in spanking uh, the children, but he believed in berating Jim in front of the siblings. You tell me that didn't do more damage to Jim than an actual good old-fashioned spanking. If you're against spanking, sorry. You know, but I'm just saying. Uh, so if you're going to go into the realm of corrections, you have to think of what is your exit plan. An exit plan is important. I have a friend that went to the uh, West Point, and he was a, a captain, maybe a major in uh, Iraq. He said, the reason we messed up in Iraq, he said, and I didn't know this, he said, before you ever enter a war, you know what you're supposed to know? Your exit strategy. He said, before you even start your battle plans, you have to have your exit strategy. So when I watch people going into a correction device, I'm like, what exit strategy? Mine is a silent correction. I just came up with these four for my brain. I have to know how to exit. Because you see it in trials. Now that I'm judging, I really see it. Leash comes off. Ba -da 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 -da. I'm like, ah, uh -huh, we got a problem here. This can only take you thus far. Here's the problem with straight motivational training where people don't want to correct. The problem with straight motivational training is it works until it doesn't work. What do I mean by that? My food reward or my ball reward is a seven, but its desire to kill the cat is a nine. I'll lose every single time. Right. There's no, I have to have something to go over that. Right. So that's where motivational training does break down. Um, or you can have something called a self-rewarding behavior. Does everybody know what a self-rewarding behavior is? How about this? This one lady, she was coming out to a uh, trial in my field. I didn't know the dog. I was doing the escape bite and then the out attack. It's probably like 10 years ago. And she said, when I come up to say sit for the long bite, my dog's going to want to keep barking. When my dog offers the behavior of sit, quite, you know, so you come next to your dog, it's barking, you say, sit. She says, when the dog eventually sits, I'm going to click and I want you to pay him. I'm like, okay, got it. Makes sense to my mind. So I do my skate bite, out, re-attack, out, she walks up, sit, seven barks, eight barks, nine barks, ten barks, he got quiet. I, she clicked and I paid him. She said, can we do it again? I said, sure. Next time she said, sit, it was like 20 barks. Sit, 70, 18, 19, 20, he eventually sat, click, and I paid him. She uh, came back the next week, and we were up to 50 barks before he sat. She said, are we going in the wrong direction? I said, definitely. <laughs> I don't know your dog. Right? She said, what do you think is happening? I said, have you ever thought maybe your dog likes barking more than the sleeve? That's called a self-rewarding behavior. What about the dog actually likes barking more than the sleeve itself? I don't know her dog, but it was just, you could see it. She was like, 
I never thought of that. I'm like, I'm not saying I'm right, but what you're doing is definitely not working. So if we're working, the next time it's five, then two, then one. So I'm not against what she was, her. I wasn't against her theory. I was against how her exit plan was looking. So when you guys are thinking like, I know all my steps with my exit plan and eh, eh, eh. So you have to think of developing your program. So the best thing that you guys can do is when you go to seminars, start developing whatever program you have. So take like, hopefully five things from this and you're like, I like that. Whatever you don't like, throw away. And you go to another seminar, you're like, hey, I can incorporate to that. So you're building into a program. What you don't want to do is when I first started training, I did the worst cut, my poor female, this is like 29 years ago, my poor female, I did this. I'd go to a Franz Dorf seminar. You remember Franz Dorf, Sandy? Oh yeah, <laughs> these are old names. Uh, Riser, oh. and Fritz, when, Tom, when the Volras had them all over. Yeah. So I went to Franz Dorf, I'm like, that's how you do it. So I changed my whole program to match Franz's. Then I went to another seminar six months later, I'm like, that's even better, that's how you do it. And I changed programs. Really then I went, it was very common back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I went to another seminar, that, and my poor female, you could just see her like, choose a freaking way. You could just see her expression like, you're changing it again. It was the worst thing I could have done rather than like, I'm adding something to what I already do. So if you like, unless you don't have a program, but if you already have kind of a program and you like scrap it all and do exactly what I'm doing, saying, it's probably a failure of a seminar. You don't want to do everything, it might not fit your personality, you know, I don't know. If you don't have a program, this is a good place to start. It's a good place to start. And I know it works. I mean, it works for us uh, real well. But I think this is really good to think about. What is your goal? What is my exit plan if my motivation doesn't work? What are steps with my correction? Now the e-collar, the very first thing that I use the e-collar for on step one is what? Name. What's the second thing that I use it for? Don't look away on a foos. This is the most important command in all of Shutsum. This is, you show me a dog with a good foos, I can get your dog to do almost anything. If I have a dog with an exceptional foos going around the one meter, that's, that won't be a problem. The dog has learned how to learn, and foos is the hardest of all. Ex Why? Why is it the hardest? It's the most unnatural exercise in all of canine world. You'll see dogs laying down, sitting, jumping logs, um, picking up things. You know what you'll never see a dog doing? A foos. What's the greatest movie of all time? Gladiator. <laughs> I, love I, lo I love that movie. Anyway, do you remember, if you watch Gladiator again, that first battle scene, did you see that Sable Shepherd? Do you guys remember the Shepherd, uh, Russell Crowe? I've seen that show. Ah, you ever seen Gladiator? <laughs> I know, I'm like... Leave the seminar, please. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this, obviously it's not Russell Crowe, but this dog is on, foosing on a, while well, the guy's on a horseback. Mm -hmm. And that dog has, I am like, Okay, because the first time I saw the movie, I was like, that dog is on a foos. And then it had the bite work within the battle. I'm like, of course, it's a freaking Schutzen dog. It's so easy to teach this dog, and you can see the dog's intellect rather than looking around, and it all started with a foos in the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> the second thing <laughs> is I teach my dog to hold its down on. Now, this one's tricky. So this one I want you to really get, put your thinking caps on. The first one, come when you're cold. Second one, come tighter into me, don't. Now I'm switching everything on the heels. Because if I say plots, and Sandy calls my dog, and my dog gets up, and I say, no, tick, and I hit him on the E, he might think he has to come to me. <coughs> because he's only known the E caller for what? Coming closer to me, forcing deeper into me. So now I have my dog on a plots, like where that speaker is. And I only use it for the infraction of the breaking of the plots. So Sandy, can you call my dog? She calls him. And he starts to break towards her and I go, no, tick. I only use one tick for getting up, then I use body pressure. Can you guys picture body pressure? I come at him, so I'll have to have a little more room. How about this? You're never gonna see, let's say that dumbbell is where my dog is. You're never gonna see me do this. Good boy. <laughs> that will blow my dog head a lot. That was a mixed message. So. <laughs> So what do I do? He comes towards me. I mean, towards Sandy. No, tick, plots. Now I take pressure off once he gives in good plots. It's only one tick for the infraction of breaking the plots, and the rest is body pressure. Now, 
On my long down for my BH and my one, I can see my dog out of my peripheral vision. If my dog starts to sniff, and I say I'm at a silent correction, step four on the long down, so my dog's good at it, starts to sniff because it's bored or whatever, or a bitch in season. I'll do this. I'll switch my feet. Tick, tick. Takes a hip and rolls. Tick, tick. If I'm on step three, it'll be this. Starts to sniff. No, tick, tick. And my feet move as I'm ticking. So on the beach and the one and the two, where do dogs break? And recalls and dumbbells. So when somebody calls their dog in the trial, guess what I do? Because my back's to the dog. And now my dog's like, why did you move? <laughs> that really gets the focus. Can you guys picture that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right when the dumbbell, and I hear the handler say, bring, my feet switch. Because I can't see my dog, it's behind me. But I want them, that's why if I don't have focus, I can't communicate to my dog. I can be doing this all day long, but if I don't have focus, you have to get the focus first. You can't put the cart before the horse and do these exercises if you don't have focus. However you're going to get it, whatever program you decide, you have to have the dog paying attention to. I can communicate on a lot of things. If you watch me at any championship, if you go to Working Dog EU and you see the championships I've been in, if ever you see me stop like this in training, tick, tick, a fast stop is always pressure. Tick, tick. This kind of stop is always good. That's always a good thing. So let's say I have, uh, I was in Ohio, it was a cool day, my female Arna, she was like very, very intense. And before the group, I stopped like this. You saw her ears go back a little. I corrected her in the middle of a trial. It was a mental correction, but I corrected her. I can't correct my dog in a trial, even though it's a mental correction. But I had to correct her every time in training, doing a silent halt very quickly. And I won't have time to get into it, but I'll also use that on the back transport. So I guess what I'm saying is you have to have focus. And if you have focus in the trial, then you communicate. Before we get karma, the last thing is, do you guys know the sport of water polo? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows water polo? Mm -hmm. I played water polo in high school. And I, got, I was getting ready in shape for basketball. That's the reason I played. <laughs> and if you don't know the sport of water polo, the pool's so deep you can't touch the bottom. You can't touch the bottom of the pool. Our warm-up my freshman year, I knew how to swim. I wasn't like a skilled swimmer. I, I knew how to swim. Our warm-up was 40 laps. That was our warm-up. When it came time for the actual uh, scr scrimmage, our first day, like how it works, I'm in the deep end, I could care less about the game. I just didn't want to, what, drown. You know, I'm like, <laughs> just don't die, Joel. And so I didn't care where the flankers were, the hole set, where the goalie was. I just don't drown. Once I became more skilled at swimming... Then I could start what you call seeing the court. That's the flankers. That's how the whole set works. This is how the game works. If I'm worried about my dog leaving me on foos on the BH, I'm at the swimming stage. This is where we all start. You want to get past the swimming stage into where you can see the court. So let's say Sandy's part of the group, and I'm on my foos, and I know my dog's not going to look away from me. I can say to myself, I noticed the last two dogs in the trial sniffed. Maybe she forgot she had food on her. So I don't go around Sandy. Now I'm seeing the court. Versus, please don't leave me. Please, say you love me. Please, you know, in the trial. you got to get to the point in your training where you get past swimming, and the dog, you say, I know it's going to be with me. It's going to foos. Now there's degrees. Maybe you drop the head a little bit. But not where they're leaving you. All right. And that's not only going to come from motivation, you guys, because I'm going to say, I love motivation. I always start with motivation. A lot of motivation, but there comes a time you must do it because my kids love this kind of obedience. Go eat your ice cream. My children love that kind of obedience. Go eat your vegetables or clean your room. That's a whole different beast of obedience. So as long as everything's fun, foos and here's your food. Look, hey, uh, but what comes, the time when it's hot, I don't feel like it. There's been a bitch in season. Okay, whatever. Now you have to foos. Now it's not. Uh, what's in it but you can't go to the compulsion <coughs> you can't you've got to stay on the dating page i guess is what i'm saying you can't go here until you have this relationship and then after 28 years my wife can crack me pretty hard and it's, <laughs> it's not weird all right jane so can you guys uh, please, uh,
and the jumper pole. Sandy, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm picturing it yeah. in my head. Yeah. Just like. Mm -hmm.